Well, Rob, we're, we're doing everything we can. Uh, we want to negotiate a, a fair deal, a fair deal that will keep the students in the class, not hurt the students by walking out, not hurting parents by walking out, not hurting the economy. It'll probably cost hundreds of millions of dollars talking to business owners when, when their employees don't show up because the teachers would rather go on, go on strike for a day. Uh, we're, we're confident that uh, we're going to get a deal. We've got to deal with three other unions. And we sit back, Rob, and then ask ourselves if it's good enough for QP and the other unions and all the other OPS staff that work in the province, why isn't it good enough for the head of the unions? And I always differentiate between the teachers and their union heads. I support the hardworking men and women that, that teach our children every single day. I think they're, uh, they don't have good leadership, uh, head of the unions. They just, uh, they want to argue no matter what premier, no matter what government uh, is in, in power. And they, uh, they have to understand uh, because of the last 15 years of mismanagement, scandal and waste, we're in this position. But uh, hopefully they're going to take the 1% deal. Uh, we've come out with concessions. I want to thank uh, Minister Lecce for doing an incredible job, absolutely incredible, and just going out and about and talking to, talking to parents. They're frustrated. They're, they're frustrated that uh, the teachers can't stay in the classroom and negotiate at the same time. So we're, we're confident we'll, we'll get a deal and, and uh, things will be back to normal, hopefully sooner than later. Okay. You mentioned the issue of, of the way the negotiations are at the 1%, notwithstanding the fact that the cap is still in place and there's a legal challenge on it. Mm -hmm. But given the fact that you now have all unions um, going to high strike action on next week, that's already been planned for. The $750 million offer that mm -hmm. Minister Lecce has talked about, yes or no, is there any way that you would go higher? Just no. No, we're, you know something? We can't have rules for, for the heads of the unions that represent the teachers and rules for everyone else in the province. And uh, again, we're, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that the students have a safe uh, environment to go to school, uh, the parents don't have the pressure, the uncertainty. And uh, one, one parent I, I saw yesterday said, you know, the teachers are, are holding holding us hostage. Um, and that's, uh, now you, let me repeat that. The unions, head of the unions, are holding the parents hostage, not the teachers. Mm -hmm. This has been going on since last year. Mm -hmm. For the average Ontarian who's watching this, who may have a child in the public education system or may not, yeah. what do you say to them about the, this rising cost of these negotiations when it comes to legal bills, when it comes to mm -hmm. Well, we're, we're going back to the legislature, uh, I believe it's February 18th, uh, and we plan on going back there, and, and uh, hopefully we can get a deal done by then. And uh, I believe in treating our, our teachers fairly. I think they've been treated uh, very fairly, uh, not now, not only now, but uh, over the, the years. They're being compensated fairly. They do a great job. They work hard, but they're the second highest paid uh, teachers in the, in the country. And I'm, I'm fine with that, but stay in the classroom. And uh, so that, that's what we want to focus on, making sure that uh, the kids are in the classroom. Excuse me, there's speculation that uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle might end up living in Toronto. If they do, would you consider going to Ontario? Well, I, 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 and I'll, I'll check for you. I was in the understanding that the RCMP, if anything, would be taking care of uh, taking care of them. But I would uh, be more than happy to check for you on that. And if they decide to pick Toronto, uh, we welcome them. We welcome them with open arms. And uh, maybe one day they'll come by and say hello to us here. Even if they yeah. 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 education premier, yeah. parents generally do not like teacher strikes, and there are yeah. so many rotating strikes going on right now. Nobody can. Mm -hmm. How closely are you involved in the negotiations or watching the negotiations? Because ultimately, it can backfire on you personally. Mm -hmm. 
I'm in uh, conversations with uh, the minister uh, every single day. I was on the phone with him at 11 o'clock last night. Do you guide him? Uh, you know something? Uh, we work together as a team. I have all the confidence in the world in Minister Lecce. He's a very talented uh, minister, and uh, we work hand in hand. Uh, like any decision down here, we always uh, work with our cabinet, our caucus, and uh, make decisions uh, as a group. But uh, again, um, Make no mistake about it. This is about compensation. This is about the unions wanting to take $750 million more out of the pockets of the taxpayers. But it's also about that the, rises in e-learning. Well, you we, said you won't budge on the 1% cap. Will you budge on those? Well, we did. We already did. We, uh, we dropped the class size. Uh, and with uh, e-learning, uh, you know, that, that's the way of the future. We even brought it down to four courses, down to, down to two over a four-year span, and I find, I find it ironic that when, when the teachers have to upgrade their skills, guess what? They do it online. But it's not all right for a grade 11 or grade 12 student uh, to go online and take a course. I, I know one of my assistants in the office took four courses, he told me, and uh, they didn't have a problem, but that's the way of the future. We either stay stagnant and roll over like the previous Liberal government did, and Give, give the unions whatever they want, or we be responsible and respect the taxpayers' money and be fair. We aren't being unfair with uh, the teachers, uh, or the teachers' unions, I should say. Uh, we're, we're being fair. We're treating them uh, the same as, as everyone else. And if we, we didn't face the deficit and the debt that we're facing, uh, we wouldn't be in this position. We're, we're digging ourselves out of the uh, deficit and uh, finally, we'll, we'll be able to the balance in, in year five, as we said. Uh, but we're being responsible. And hopefully, they'll be responsible too. Colin. Yeah. The offer that you have made to teachers' unions, are they your final offer? Well, I, again, I'll leave that up to the, the minister to continue negotiating hard. Uh, but uh, it's the 1%. If I came out tomorrow and said, we're going to give them another 1%, I'd be all done. But we can't do that. We don't have the $750 million. Well, your we, we don't ask, if, if, if your government is so confident in your position, mm -hmm. uh, you have a provision that you can go bypass the unions, the mm -hmm. leadership, and go directly to teachers and present that contract offer to teachers. Mm -hmm. Will you take that step? Well, Colin, I, I can tell you just the teachers I, I know. Um, I have a family member that's, that's a teacher that uh, told me, you know, all her colleagues. Number one, they're, they're scared to say anything in front of the unions. Number two, they just want to go back to work. They want to be in the classroom. They want to teach the kids. They have a passion for teaching. That, that's what I've heard from the teachers. And I can't say they're all that way, but the ones I've talked to just want to go back to work. They, they understand the situation. They understand they're being fairly compensated. And, uh, but then again, they, they work hard too. So, uh, would, you put, would you present your contract offer directly to the teachers? See what well, a, 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 again, Colin, I, I'll let uh, the minister continue uh, to negotiate. Well, let's see. We, we, that's the last step, but what we really want to do, we want to get a deal. We want to get a deal and get. Uh, the kids back in the classroom. That's, that's where they belong. Uh, we don't want any disruption with people's lives, the uncertainty. That's the, the big problem here. It's the uncertainty. People want certainty. Uh, companies want certainty to know their employees are showing up and they aren't staying at home. Uh, again, that's, uh, that's what I'm hearing everywhere I'm going. <laughs> Well, I can, I can tell you that when I met with the, the five families, um, they, they were heartbroken and, and uh, make no mistake about it. Uh, what I heard from them is uh, this Iranian regime shot down that plane. Innocent lives got shot down by a ruthless, uh, careless uh, Iranian uh, regime that uh, I want to send a message and it might not get over there. I support the protesters 
that are out there. Uh, we believe in democracy here in Canada and uh, would love to see nothing less than democracy in, in, in Iran. And I, I know uh, Goldie and, and Michael and, and uh, my, my uh, friend Amin Masudi that you all know. Um, you know, it's, uh, make no mistake about it, they, uh, it was the Iranian regime that, that shot this plane down and it was reckless, careless, lied to people. And the people want justice. These families want justice. The people that did this need to be brought to justice and be held accountable. They need transparency from the Iranian government that they seem to be going all over the place. Uh, you know, took them, what, three, four days to finally admit that they, they shot it down. That, that's, that's unacceptable. And the, the stories I heard... No, you, you know something? I, I give the federal government uh, credit. Uh, Minister Champagne's been working his back off. Uh, he was over in London the other day. He met with us, met with the families, uh, offered them support, offered their family support uh, from the security forces standing outside their ha houses in Iran, not letting the, the families talk to anyone. Uh, make no mistake about it, this is a brutal regime in Iran. Simple. Next question. Well, you know, I'll let the minister uh, address that uh, when, when she talks about that. But I want to remind everyone: we we increased spending to health care 1.9 billion dollars. We're working with the the professionals. Uh, and by the way, I want to I thank the frontline doctors and nurses that have come up with great ideas to, to drive efficiencies, to come up with technologies, better ways, faster ways of, of doing things. Uh, uh, one, one hospital up in Vaughan is focusing on lean practices that uh, they've reduced their wait times down to 20 minutes. And we're going to implement those policies across the province uh, to make sure that we eventually end uh, hallway health care. And uh, again, when I talked to the, the doctors, uh, they were ignored uh, for seven years from the previous government. Finally, they have a voice. Finally, they have an opportunity to come up with suggestions. And, and uh, I want to I thank uh, Minister uh, Elliott that's doing an incredible job along with uh, Dr. Ruben Devlin as well. Uh, they've come a long way, but I can assure you, uh, we have a lot more to do. It's a massive, massive machine, and uh, we can't do it alone. We have to uh, ask for the support, and they've given it to us uh, from the frontline doctors and, and the incredible uh, nurses that we have. No, it's just uh, ten thousand dollars for for one year. Uh, hopefully, we'll have uh, pr private sector partners help out the following years. We'll sit down with the families and and they'll be uh, available uh, for universities uh, across the province, but we want the input from the families. And it's open to anyone, but they'll, they'll have the input on how they, they want this directed. I think to the contrary. Uh, to the contrary, that they, they understand. They face us every three to four years, no matter who's, who's standing here. And uh, it's just a little uh, way of supporting them if they have to go to daycare and uh, have their kids in daycare. They have lives to carry on. They have to go to work. And so I, I think uh, it was a good move that we're using the teachers' salaries to compensate the parents that have to pay, be it $60, $40, to put their uh, children in, in daycare. <laughs> No, we never we never talked about uh, that conversation. We just strictly uh, spoke about how we're going to help the families, and uh, he, he's a great minister. He's he's working hard. Uh, he's very passionate. Um, it was a very uh, very emotional meeting for for all of us in that uh, room, listening to the horrific stories, 
how their, their families were being treated over in Iran by the security forces. Uh, it was uh, sad, sad stories, but it's uh, disgusting how, how the uh, Iranian regime are, are treating these, these families. It's uh, really, really disgusting. <laughs> I'm sorry, someone who hasn't. Uh, so, sorry. They should have told Canada uh, that they were going to uh, launch an attack against Soleimani. The, the prime minister mm -hmm. said they weren't given any notice on this mm -hmm. and that he would have liked that. Well, that's up to the, the prime minister to deal with uh, the president down there. Uh, I can I can tell you again, talking to uh, talking to the families. Uh, there's there's one person that shot down that plane. That was the Iranian regime, the ruthless, evil Iranian regime. That needs to be changed. I support the people there, and uh, the protesters. I support them 1,000 percent, and uh, I support the the families and 115,000 Iranians uh, that live here in Ontario. Uh, we have your back. We'll support you. We'll support your families, and uh, we're we're here. Anyways, thank you.